This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, um, Mike Elliott. I'm hosting for uh, Ted Ralston today for Where the Drone Leads from uh, Pioneer Plaza, downtown Honolulu. And uh, Ted's off on another um, mission here for the state to uh, bring drone technology and jobs uh, back home. And he's been doing an incredible job uh, working over at UH and hosting this show over the past couple years as we begin to um, continue to introduce uh, drone technology and mainstream it for a lot of work that actually needs to be done. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today with uh, some of the products that are out there and available uh, to the community, uh, more for the uh, industrial and commercial use uh, that has been uh, very much in demand over the past few years. And we've seen a lot of that in some of the trade shows that we've been to with the uh, commercial UAV expo that, was, uh, that they have in Vegas every year. Also, Interdrone, the international drone show that they have in Vegas and uh, to see some of the technology that's out there, whether it's for uh, mapping purposes, traditional photogrammetry, uh, LIDAR usage, uh, search and rescue. Uh, there's, there's just such a wide variety of uh, usages that have been um, uh, coming to the forefront over the years. And so what you're starting to see now is a number of companies begin to manufacture drones that are purpose-built for uh, you know, commercial industrial use, taking into account the needs of the consumer uh, to build the product that they need. One of those that I uh, have right here in front of me now is uh, from DJI. It is their uh, M210. It is one of their newest uh, drones. It's actually purpose-built, like I said, for commercial industrial use. It is uh, IP43 rated, which means basically it can handle the weather, light rains, stuff like that, not a problem. Whereas uh, traditional drones that most folks are used to for off the shelf for hobbyists, uh, a light rain, uh, you know, they just, they're sucking in so much uh, air and the cooling and everything. They're just not uh, pre uh, prepared or protected against that type of uh, intrusion into the electronics for the, their, uh, their systems. But, um, this one is uh, purpose-built and actually meets those standards. Uh, what you see mounted on here are uh, two cameras. And so, yeah, we have a system now that has two cameras. This is not for uh, film uh, production or TV production or anything like that. What you have on, on uh, this side, on the left-hand side of the drone, uh, is the um, Z30 camera, which is a 30-time optical zoom, six-time digital zoom so that you can stand off and when you're doing inspections on uh, bridges, structures, uh, cell towers, et cetera, and be able to uh, zoom in for a very close and accurate view, whether you're shooting uh, photo or video. And then off to the right on the other side, what you see here is a uh, FLIR camera, thermal camera system. Uh, it's their DJI uh, XT. And these, both of these cameras are made by DJI. They integrate you know, with this drone system and they are uh, integral into the app and how everything works together. So what they've created is a simple uh, system that if you have had flown some of the previous products, you'd be very familiar with. So it's not necessarily a huge leap in um, learning how to fly it, but now you have something that is purpose-built for uh, doing aerial type of inspections, whether for buildings, bridges, like I said, uh, cell towers, uh, roadways, you know, if you're even uh, search and rescue, this is probably one of the top ones that we've seen uh, purchased by a number of agencies for uh, search and rescue, fire departments, uh, some SWAT teams, being able to stand off at a distance and actually be able to monitor a situation when there's a, a SWAT response possibly. So um, what I wanted to show you a couple things. So what it's, what's kind of interesting too is that the cameras actually work together. So if you see I'm just moving the cameras up and down. They're both working together while you're viewing the imagery. And if you're recording the imagery, they're both recording at the same time, looking in the same direction that you're actually shooting uh, for, the, for what you're actually looking at. So you don't have to necessarily go back and forth and then move one camera and then move the other. These, th these cameras are going to work together, and they're going to be able to uh, uh, focus on what it is that you're looking for. And they're three-axis stabilized cameras. So they're going to have a perfectly smooth image while in flight. And then even while you're zoomed in, uh, you have a pretty substantial uh, image that you're able to, uh, uh, or a stabilized image that you're able to see. 
So that's one of the really interesting features. And then, like I said, too, when you're actually recording uh, on this particular platform, and both cameras record it. This particular uh, FLIR camera records at a 30 hertz frame rate, as does the uh, C30. So 30 frames per second is what it's really, th is a 30 uh, frames per second rate. So these videos are both going to be at the same sequence or same frame rate. And you can overlay these videos in some of the projects and output products that you're actually going to do for a customer if you're, if you're interested. So you can have the FLIR video you know, as the main, which we've done for some projects. And then you can superimpose the video from the, uh, from the Z30 camera in the lower right. Uh, or if you need to switch back and forth, you can easily do that. That's not a problem in some of the post-processing that you might want to do. And uh, one of the interesting features on this one too, this is the first one uh, that I know of on the market that has an ADS-B receiver. ADS-B is a system of aircraft awareness um, and, and avoidance basically that is being instituted by the FAA uh, manned aircraft have systems that communicate, uh, both transmit and receive. Uh, this system just receives only. So it actually also is capable of uh, receiving aircraft information, knowing that there are other aircraft in the area, and giving you the uh, appropriate warning. And I've seen some of those pop up as far as you know, 30, 35 kilometers away, which is well outside the range of where we'd actually be operating. But it's a very sensitive system and it does work. And uh, yeah, it's part of the future for this obstacle avoidance, or uh, aircraft avoidance, integration into the national airspace, and just generally how these systems are gonna be uh, working and employed in some of the uh, workflow that you see with a number of uh, architectural construction and engineering firms uh, you know, here in the state. So a lot of times people say, well, you know, why would I you know, why would I buy this? Why would I, what would I get out of this? And really what you're looking at for some of the systems like this, it's a, an issue of uh, time, uh, where you're saving a lot of time being able to do a particular job. If you have to scaffold the side of a building uh, to be able to inspect it, put personnel over the side, um, removal of all that, you know, scaffolding, and so you're, you're talking potentially, you know, weeks uh, where you could actually do an exterior uh, building inspection uh, in just a matter of minutes, possibly, you know, maybe an area that you were you had concern of. Uh, if you're doing, you know, roofing inspection, or you're looking at machinery, possibly on top of a tall, uh, tall building, and uh, you can use the thermal camera and the FLIR uh, and the regular cameras together, and just check to see if those things are actually, uh, you know, operating properly. Uh, solar farms and solar panel inspection. Once again, you can do the same thing. You can record both at the same time. You can see with the thermal camera, the panels that are operating or probably aren't, or maybe have some damaged cells. And then with the regular camera, you can also see, well, is, that, is it actually a damaged cell or is there dirt and debris possibly on that, on that panel that maybe needs to be cleaned? So you can quickly make some of these assessments for you. And, uh, and then in the search and rescue realm, um, you know, just a, a few years ago, there were really no zoom camera uh, capable systems that were out there. The only thing you could do was try to put a long focal length lens on a DLSR uh, camera and then put that thing up into the air and then hope you could see what you're actually looking for and then you had limited to no control uh, while you were actually flying. So um, what DJI has done with the uh, uh, Z30 camera that they've made available is actually have, uh, like I said, an optical zoom capability uh, that allows you to stand off and actually, if in a search and rescue type of scenario, be able to zoom in at a greater distance without having to necessarily fly to a point, oh, that's nothing, oh, let me fly over here, no, that's nothing, um, and, and wasting time and battery when you can actually just pop up to a particular point, start looking around, and use that in combination with the, uh, with the FLIR camera itself too. So if you're looking for somebody, uh, the FLIR camera is extremely sensitive. Uh, its sensitivity on this particular one is less than 50 millikelvin. So if you're a science nerd like I am and stuff, you know exactly what I'm talking about for that particular measurement of uh, temperature. And it allows you to detect very finite uh, changes in temperature, difference in temperature. So we're basically talking with a FLIR camera, we're talking heat energy. and. Uh, you know, and even at range, and it doesn't matter if it's day or night. I had uh, some folks ask me about that. Well, how can you fly a FLIR camera during the day? Well, heat's heat. Heat energy is heat energy. 
there are certain situations where flying maybe just after sunset or at sunset might be a little more optimal for certain types of inspection work. But yes, you can fly during the day and it's uh, extremely, uh, extremely effective. Uh, we were out doing one particular job and uh, we could, uh, off in the distance, uh, could see some cars traveling on H2 and could easily see the exhaust on these vehicles and they were probably two miles away or more. So, you know, extremely sensitive uh, uh, camera. But in a search and rescue situation, you know, it may mean the difference uh, in life and death, you know, trying to find somebody. Um, one of the reasons when we first got started uh, doing this as a business for uh, our business at Drone Services Hawaii, um, that search and rescue aspect, I think, was kind of near and dear to our hearts. And there was an incident that occurred on um, uh, Stairway to Heaven uh, back, I think it was in uh, February 2015 or so, January, February 2015. And uh, we were just getting started. And the capability to actually do that level of search and rescue effort with drones just really wasn't there. Uh, some people courageously volunteered to help and try to see what they could uh, do to find this individual that had, uh, that had fallen. But um, we just, the industry did not have that level of technology. I think if that incident were to occur today, uh, the likelihood of finding uh, that individual uh, would be much, much higher. So these types of systems actually you know, are really growing into their own and being purpose-built you know, for this, uh, this type of industry. So I wanted to show you just real quick. So you have, uh, I'll flip this over here and I'll get this on the camera correct. Let's see, right about there. So in this particular case right now, you have both images that are actually up on the, uh, on the display itself. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over. We'll switch over to the thermal display. And we'll just bring the cameras down and across. So you can see some of the camera systems that are here um, you know, on, the, uh, on the set itself. We'll just kind of cruise around. And the camera has to settle out a little bit as it comes across. So right now, you're looking in a, a heat view. And this particular view is a, uh, called Fusion. And there's a number of different settings, palette settings, that you can utilize uh, for the cameras themselves. So we're looking right back at the screen that you're seeing myself on. And we'll come back around. And like I said, we see some more equipment in the background. And then, uh, like I said, in the different palette views, uh, you can actually come in and change those. And the way we equate this to people, we just say, well, it's, it's kind of like predator view. You know, you can actually go through, just like in predator, you know, and you try to find what looks, what's the right, uh, what's the right, uh, you know, wavelength that you're actually looking for. But in, it has a, a variety of palettes available that are uh, very helpful in sometimes trying to discern minute uh, temperature detail. And they actually have classes in uh, thermography, believe it or not, um, that, that is a thing. Uh, thermographers are people that actually can, uh, interpret thermal data for a customer and uh, able to uh, better understand exactly what it is that they're seeing. So you said you're looking at the back of that laptop there and some other stuff hanging off, the power supply and everything as you see those. We got some of the folks in the background. So we'll come down a little. So yeah, it's a, it's a rather um, interesting piece of technology and uh, obviously we're rather close to everything here but you can see that other camera the heat coming off of that off the front of that camera let's switch over to another palette view real quick and we'll try something else here um, so in this one uh, if you're looking at it you actually see a lot more gradient in the temperature detail uh, that you're looking at in this particular case, and you can, like I said, you can see that heat energy that's coming off that particular, particular item. So, uh, no different if it was, you know, if it was somebody. Um, so, looking back towards the glass, getting a little reflection off the glass, looking all the way back towards the camera itself or the drone itself. And so, if you look in the lower portion there, you see the, the regular camera, and it's moving right along across that same area. So, if you're recording, you're recording both videos at the same time. Very handy, uh, very useful in uh, inspection work, but also, like I said, in that search and rescue realm. And uh, 
you know, with this capability too, you have uh, the ability to remotely or be able to transmit uh, this data to remote sites. And they even have uh, a new feature, new software called uh, Flight Hub that actually uh, will live transmit back to a secure server for your particular entity. And you can track all your stuff that's ongoing, uh, where it's at, who's flying, uh, all, you know, video feed from stuff. And so if, when you have uh, a company that maybe has multiple units out in the field, you know, they can kind of track and monitor everything that's actually, actually going on. So, uh, you know, this is, uh, we're going to do a different configuration when we come back after the break. And if you have any uh, online uh, questions, Twitter or calls or anything, you know, please give us a shout and we'd be glad to answer them for you. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's gonna drive? It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose the DT. Captain of our team. It's the DT. For every game day, assign a designated driver. All right, so it's Mike Elliott, hey, uh, hosting here for Ted Ralston, Where the Drone Leads. We were gone for about 30 seconds. And uh, what I was able to do for you in that 30 seconds was able to reconfigure this drone to be able to do um, a top mount for this zoom camera and uh, be able to do, if you were doing underside bridge inspections or needed to look up vertically, once again, a feature that just really didn't exist in a lot of platforms that was out there. It took me 30 seconds. The time that basically uh, that commercial ran, I was able to disconnect uh, the camera, reconnect it on the top, do the uh, connection for the feed that comes from that device on the top, and turn this drone back on, and it'd be ready to go back up in the air in no time at all. So, you know, another handy feature and capability, once again, um, you know, folks listening to the industry, what do you need, what do you need? And to be able to look uh, vertically a lot of times and be able to do vertical inspections uh, underneath bridges or look under structures, you know, is, uh, is something that is uh, in higher and higher demand. And, um, you know, it's, once again, it's a time and money saver. Uh, if you need to look and do a bridge inspection, but you don't have time to scaffold the waterway or bring in a barge or something like that to be able to get under there with a with a man lift and, and spend a few days out there doing that, you can easily just fly and uh, be able to do that level of inspection, be able to zoom in uh, you know, on the uh, areas of interest, uh, do photography or video that's necessary for that project, and uh, you know, be able to bring it back, land, move on to the next job. So like I said, once again, being able to save time, uh, money, and also safety. Uh, really one of the things that's key about a lot of these, these products in their use in the commercial uh, industrial type of services, whether in, uh, like I said, archi architecture, construction, engineering firms, is really a safety aspect. Uh, a lot of these have introduced a new level of safety in uh, not having to put people necessarily in harm's way. And that's really what's been uh, pretty spectacular. We've even heard uh, stories of um, uh, solar companies uh, who have incorporated drones into their business to do pre and post inspection of uh, rooftop solar. And because they're actually reducing uh, the number of man hours of putting people on roofs and the number of people that they're putting on roofs, they actually saw a reduction in their insurance rates. And that's something that you know never really had thought directly about that you know, the, even the insurance industry would take note and how a business changed its business practices uh, could actually lead to an additional savings uh, by not just the time piece by using drones, but 
on the insurance side um, also. So uh, you know, we've done a, a variety of projects uh, here in the state of Hawaii. We continue to uh, expand what we, uh, what we offer to folks and we really enjoy working with uh, our clients out there. We've helped uh, some companies establish some of their own drone programs. And uh, for others, you know, we are always on call to be able to service any of their needs. Uh, we have uh, this drone available as well as a number of others. It just depends on what it is that we actually need to do, and what, what's the uh, right tool for the job that we need to actually bring out there. Um, <clears throat> there are um, you know, some other options, there's other things that are coming in the near future. So one of the technologies that's talked about heavily is a bit of AI. Yes, artificial intelligence, where these types of products get a little bit smarter, that they become more uh, aware of their environment uh, as to how they navigate and how they maneuver, and uh, to where the, uh, the operator becomes more of a just uh, mission programmer, and then the drone is able to smartly navigate its environment to do what the operator has asked it to do. And once again, this is going to be uh, you know, an incredible uh, you know, time savings uh, when you can actually uh, just put this thing in the air, have it run and do its mission, or if you're doing a recurrent type of um, mission on a regular basis and it's the same thing over and over and over again, you can save that entire profile for that job and you go to the site, you set everything up, you fly that mission, you download that data, you process it, you deliver it, well, it's internal for the company itself or to the client. And it allows for a simplicity of uh, operations. So you'll start to see some of that uh, coming in the near future. Um, with regard to rules with the FAA, uh, things really haven't, haven't changed much at all. It's just uh, been a general awareness. So a lot of companies are starting to ask more and more questions and they say, well, hey, there's all these rules. Well, th those rules were always there. They just weren't necessarily always fully aware uh, of what they were and, and how they could do this. Um, we are always available to be able to answer your questions if you have any type of questions on uh, you know, where the FAA rules are, where some of those resources are, and then even how to do certain types of projects. Uh, there have been a lot of times where uh, we've had clients who um, have drone programs and they're, they're not fully aware of how they can actually execute a particular type of mission. So we help them in some of the mission planning that they do, some of the equipment that they're operating, and even uh, training some of their uh, personnel you know, on site if necessary. Uh, and that's one of the things that we've offered with this particular product as we've been selling it in Hawaii, we, uh, because it is uh, a little more expensive, a little bit more complex, and requires a little bit more time to figure out. You know, we do some, uh, we do you know, free setup, and we do a full day on site training uh, for anyone that's uh, interested in buying this type of product for uh, for their uh, business or uh, uh, use as as part of their company, and uh, we just want to make sure that people are uh, uh, fully aware of all the capabilities, uh, things that can and cannot do, and uh, proper setup, maintenance, uh, storage, you know, which is key. Anytime you have a product like this, is making sure that it's uh, properly stored and cared for. Battery maintenance is uh, key. Uh, this has some of the largest. Uh, individual batteries I've seen from DJI, these are their TB55s, which uh, the TB50s for like the Inspire 2 is about half, half this. So all this is added section here is uh, additional battery. And uh, <clears throat> with, um, with these two cameras, you can get close to 30 minutes <clears throat> in uh, total flight time, which is pretty good. I mean, you can actually spend some loiter time, you know, when you're actually working out, working on a project, <clears throat> and you don't have to be too concerned about coming back right away. Uh, they also have an RTK version, so you'll have an RTK base station. If you're not aware of what that is, that's actually just, uh, it's going to be uh, an increased um, precision in uh, navigation and positioning uh, for your drone. So if you're doing precision type surveys, uh, we've used this particular drone and others in uh, utilization of our uh, aero points that we have from a company called Propeller Aero. And these are actually uh, ground control points that quickly, they, over a period of time, uh, record GPS data, <clears throat> use the uh, CORS RTK or correction station networks here or on some of the other islands to um, apply the correction data, and then um, able to process with the images to develop some, uh, some very uh, detailed uh, maps. 
And we've actually worked with uh, surveyors too in some of the projects and stuff. So if it does require survey level, um, if, it's a, if a surveyor is required to sign off on a project or engineer that's required to sign off on a project, um, we make sure we identify that individual with that particular company and we work closely with them uh, to ensure that all those requirements are met, that they verify the data that's received and uh, that you know, we're actually uh, able to provide an aerial uh, solution that uh, augments the uh, ground-based solution that they're already working on. And uh, occasionally too, you, know, you have uh, areas that are extremely difficult to, um, for surveyors to access. So they have called in and asked for um, aerial capability, uh, whether it's uh, one of the DJI products, uh, there's some wing products that are out there that are really great, and to be able to survey you know, large areas. So, yeah, this, uh, this particular product, like I said, has a wide variety of uses. It's the DJI M210 series uh, starts off with a, uh, a single camera gimbal system. This is the 200 with the dual camera uh, setup and then the, uh, like I said, the RTK uh, setup that it has for uh, dual camera uh, operations. And uh, if you uh, have any interest in something like that, you can contact us. We'd be uh, glad to assist you in your needs. And um, we hope that uh, you know, in the near future we're, we're starting to see and uh, assist more companies in being able to integrate drones uh, for their uh, inspection purposes, um, architectural uh, design, um, engineering management. Uh, it could also, you know, uh, volumetric analysis that you have to do for uh, quarries, uh, rock piles, stockpiles. You know, just a wide variety of uses here. and. Uh, it's, it's going to be more commonplace and once they see the simplicity of the utilization of the product, uh, the software that's available to actually process this type of information, and then also the, the output data products that you can provide uh, to the client, and how quickly you can actually take some of these measurements that in, uh, in one particular project uh, was able to take all the required measurements in 30 minutes, which um, from the drone data that was provided where normally it would have taken, uh, by the time everything was compiled, about a week or so. So, uh, you know, we uh, expect to see more of these uh, operating, hopefully, in the near future. Uh, we want to see people operate safe and responsibly. If you ever have any questions about safe, responsible drone operation, FAA rules, uh, which you kind of can and cannot do, uh, please feel free to contact us either on Facebook, send us an email, uh, or give us a call at Drone Services Hawaii. And I'm Mike Elliott. I'm out for uh, Ted Ralston this week. He'll be back next week. And in the near future, we're going to have a nice surprise announcement uh, for a new opportunity here in the state of Hawaii. Aloha.